There is a simple way to backup your Windows Server 2022. It's free and I'd like to share it with you. Start by opening Server Manager and click Local Server to see relevant information for this server. Then scroll all the way down to the Roles and Features section, click Tasks and click Add Roles and Features. This will open the Roles and Features installation wizard as expected. This by itself is quite amazing. You can stop here and admire your good work. Click Next to proceed. Make sure that this option is selected and click Next. In case you have multiple servers, verify that the correct server is selected and click Next. The ability to backup the server is not a role, but rather a feature. Click Next to move to the Feature section window. Now scroll all the way down, check the Windows Server Backup feature and click Next to proceed. This window summarizes your installation choice. As this feature doesn't require a server restart, you don't need to check this option. Click Install to start the installation. Once the installation is complete, click the Close button. You actually don't really need to wait for it to complete. You can click the Close button at any time. I just like to see the success message before I proceed. Subscribe. In Server Manager, click Tools and then Windows Server Backup. This is your interface for backup management. To create a new backup, right-click the local server and click Backup Schedule. This window shows you a list of things you need to decide while creating the backup job. What to backup, when to backup, and where to store the backup. Click Next to proceed. Choose what you want to backup either a full server, this will backup everything, or a custom backup, which after clicking next, as you can see here, allows you to add specific items to the backup. Choosing this option will do a full backup of the server. In my case, I only want to backup the users folder. Check the required folders from the list and click OK. You can add multiple items to this list. Click next to proceed to the scheduling window. This allows you to schedule the backup job. To have it run once a day, choose this option and choose the time. Otherwise, you can have it run multiple times during the day by choosing this option and assigning the required times. Click Next to proceed. Choose this option to have a dedicated disk for backups. This option to choose a volume for the backups, but not dedicated just for backups. And this option to backup to a shared folder. Make your choice and click Next. In my case, I needed to choose the disk by clicking this button and choosing the disk from the list. Depending on your previous choice, this window might be slightly different. Make your selection and click Next. This warning only appears if you choose the option to have a dedicated disk for backups. Click Yes and click Finish. Click Close after you see the success message. Here you can see the summary of the backups. And this will open the details window. To run the backup manually, open Task Scheduler, expand these folders and click the backup folder. Here is the job that was created by the backup software. If you right click and choose to run it, you'll see this message. This just indicates that you need to enable the job to run on demand. Close this window and double click the job to edit it. Go to the Settings tab, check this option and click OK. Now right-click the job and click Run. When you open Windows Explorer, you'll see that the backup disk is missing. This is specifically done in case of a dedicated backup disk. To show you the backups, I added the drive letter to the disk using Disk Management. This is not recommended for production backups. The volume should remain hidden. Now, when I open Windows Explorer, I can browse through the backup folder and see the contents. To recover, right-click the local server in the backup application and click Recover. Choose the server and click Next. Choose the date from the available backups and click Next. Choose what to recover and click Next. Choose individual files and folders to restore and click Next. Choose the destination here other options here and click Next. 
This summary shows you a list of what will be recovered and the recovery options. Click Recover to start the recovery process. Once the recovery is complete, you'll see the recovery results here. Click Close to finish the recovery process.